Disclaimer. Lore exists to help inspire creativity and story. It should not be used to lord over anyone at your game table, whether that be a dungeon master or player. Be flexible and willing to modify what exists to accommodate the story the table wishes to tell. Kieran Saley dwells on vengeance as she creates different varieties of undead to sate her sick creativity. She chafes under the tyranny of Loth and desires any chance to strike out on her own. I'm Benjamin Dignan, and welcome once again to Religion in the Realms. Names, Pronunciation, and Titles The official pronunciation of Kieran Saley is Kia Ren Saley, though when you say it quickly, it kind of comes all mushed together to become Kieran Saley. Kieran Saley goes by the following other titles, The Lady of the Dead, The Revenancer, and The Vengeful Banshee. Portfolios and Domains Kieran Saley's portfolio covers the undead and vengeance. Kieran Saley's suggested domains for 5th edition are Arcana and Death. Appearance and Manifestations Kieran Saley looks like a drow female draped in black silks and veils. She also is fond of different forms of silver jewelry, foremost the silver rings upon her hands. Kieran Saley carries a magical dagger with her that she has named Cold Heart. From the dagger's tip, it drips acid continuously. This acid applies repetitive damage to a victim if not treated by curative magics. Sometimes Kieran Saley wears a cloak made of bone. She calls this cloak the Mantle of Nightmares, and it is said to induce fear in any who hears the rattling bones of the cloak. It has been told that Kieran Saley is willing to lend out the mantle to worshippers for a period of time. Kieran Saley is a powerful necromancer and can demand loyalty from any undead in her midst. With a simple touch of her finger, she can animate the dead. Kieran Saley is immune to poisons and necromantic magics. Kieran Saley rarely appears through manifestations, but she chooses to do so through three varieties. In the first manifestation, Kieran Saley will cause a singular skull to rise and spin rapidly before an audience. When it stops, the skull will adopt the form of a female drow head. It either will communicate a cryptic message to the audience or wail out, causing audible damage to those who hear it. In her second manifestation, Kieran Saley's chuckle can be heard in the mind of a target. This individual experiences uneasiness and fear as they step atop the many graves of those who heard the same laughter. Kieran Saley's last manifestation is her most lethal. From below, two large skeletal hands burst through the ground to latch onto a target. The victim is then forcefully brought down into the earth below, being held down by these hands. Kieran Saley may only keep the target below ground for a brief time, or if she harbors deep ill will towards the victim, the victim will be held in the ground until someone else is able to release them from the skeletal grip. Kieran Saley is known to show her favor with the appearance of various gemstones. Chalcedony, Epidote, and Chrysobel are just some of the gemstones. Kieran Saley shows her disfavor with the appearance of a skull cleanly cut in two or bones that simply turn to dust when touched. Personal History Eons ago, Kieran Saley once was a mortal dark elf on Thernody, another plane of existence separate from the Forgotten Realms. There she was a powerful necromancer. For the unholy practices she performed, her husband, the king of Thernody, banished her from their home plane. After centuries in exile, Kieran Saley raised a large undead army who struck down the peoples of Thernody. Thernody is now a land devoid of life. Kieran Saley retreated to the abyss, becoming a deity 
herself much to the dismay of the Seldarine. In the abyss, Kieran Sayle went on to fall under the rule of Lolth. This was until Kieran Sayle wrested the 113th layer of the abyss, Thanatos, from the demon lord Orcus. Kieran Sayle attempted to eradicate the name of Orcus from the multiverse, but ultimately failed in this endeavor. Orcus returned to claim back his lair of the Abyss, and Kieran Sayle returned once more to the demon web pits to remain under the thumb of Loth. During the event known as the Silence of Loth on the Forgotten Realms, much of the Dark Seldarine battled with one another. Many of Kieran Sayle's followers struck in the Underdark to gain substantial holdings. In the drow city of Maramidra, a sentient temple dedicated to Kieran Sayle, known as the Undying Temple, was summoned. However, in 1377, Dale Reckoning, followers of Illustrae used high-level magic to erase the name of Kieran Sayle from the minds and records of the realms. Without any worshippers, all memory of Kieran Sayle fades and she falls into shadow. With the release of 5th edition, we see in various source books that Karen Sayle has once again returned to the Dark Seldarine, after the events of the Second Sundering. Mordenkindon's Tome of Foes tells the tale of Karen Sayle's endless cycle of death and rebirth. The chief reason that she continually is reborn is the vengeance that burns down so deeply within her and the need to see that vengeance fulfilled. It is stated in Mordenkainen's that Kieran Sayle seeks vengeance against an unnamed foe of the drow, whom the drow particularly fear and despise. Kieran Sayle's madness is said to stem from this endless cycle of death and rebirth. Personality Kieran Sayle is a chaotic evil deity. She is mad, but still possesses an amazing intellect. She dwells constantly on every slight against her, and this only fuels her deep desire for vengeance. Kieran Sayle is cruel, twisted, and fiercely independent. She prefers the company of the mindless undead that she surrounds herself with. Kieran Sayle takes no issue ruminating on a plan of revenge for a long time. Kieran Sayle has had an army of undead at her beck and call before, but she favors having lesser numbers of interesting undead creatures rather than a constant supply of the same types of undead. She shows motherly affection for these creations that is abnormal and disturbing to most. Personal Realms Kieran Sayle once had sway over the 113th layer of the Abyss, Thanatos, after killing Orcus. Now she holds a small personal realm in the Demon Web Pits. The singular notable feature of Kieran Sayle's realm is her tower made of bones. Kieran Sayle named this tower Thanatos after the Lair of the Abyss that she lost back to Orcus. Allies and Allegiances Kieran Sayle is usually identified to be allied with a couple deities associated with undeath and necromancy. Such deities are Miracle and Velsharun, though Velsharun is a dead power in the realms. Another associated deity is the Faerunian god of vengeance, Hor. Kieran Sayle is allied with some of the members of the Dark Seldarine, such as Loth, Selvatarm, and Veyron. Though this is a tenuous relationship at best, as Kieran Sayle and her followers will and have acted out against the other Dark Seldarine members. Enemies In a Dark Seldarine, Kieran Sayle and Illustrae do not see eye to eye. Kalimbor and Jurgle are not huge fans of Kieran Sayle's necromantic practices either. Kieran Sayle is opposed to the deities of the Dwergar, Laduguer, and Deep Dwera, but also Dumathoan from the Dwarven Pantheon. 
the Elven Pantheon acts out against Kieran Seeley for obvious reasons. Though Orcus is not a deity, Orcus has not forgotten the actions that Kieran Seeley has performed in the past. Deity and Avatar stat blocks. I was only able to find a stat block for Kieran Seeley's avatar in the second edition supplement Demi Human Deities. I was unable to find a stat block for Kieran Seeley herself. Symbols Kieran Seeley's singular symbol is a female drow hand wearing many silver rings. Central Dogma The dogma of Kieran Seeley is as follows. Death comes to all and cruel vengeance will be exacted on those who waste their lives on the petty concerns of this existence. True power comes only from the unquestioning servitude of the once dead mastery over death and the eventual earned stature of one of the ever living in death. Hunt, slay, and animate those who scorn the revenancer's power, and answer any slight a thousandfold, so that all may know the coming power of Kirin Sali. Presence of the Faith in the Forgotten Realms Kirin Sali has a small following, mainly composed of drow necromancers who live in the Underdark. She is a lesser known deity even amongst the drow. Few if any specialized scholars and sages know about Kirin Sali up on the surface world. Most of the necromancers who follow her seek out a form of undeath granted to them by Kieran Saley. Kieran Saley does not grant this individual lichdom, rather she grants them a lower form of undeath in the form of a wraith or a banshee. Followers unsuccessful in their vengeance in life, however, are often brought back as revenants. Hierarchy and Structure of the Clergy As a collective body, the clergy of Karen Sale are known as Crones of Thanatos. Initiates and novices of the clergy are known as the Commanded. The remaining members of the clergy are known as Night Hags, though this is not to be confused with the fiendish hag seen in the Monster Manual. Yathrin Chis exist as the elite of Kirin Seili's clergy. They both wield arcane and divinely inspired necromantic magics with great skill. They are often the heads of the small clusters of Kirin Seili worship. Yathrin Chi are strictly female. The clergy of Kirin Seili exist in secluded cells or secretive bodies in Drow society that consist of only a few members. They rarely engage and communicate with other cells. Because of this, there is little organization and regulation over the faith. Responsibilities and Duties of Worshippers Clergy religiously plot revenge on all those who may have negatively affected the faith of Kieran Saley. They also plan missions to go out and slay the needed corpses to uphold their necromantic practices. Orders and Priestly Bodies Some of the titles given to the groups at different temples of Kieran Saley are Bones of the Dead, Flesh of the Zombie, Terror Touch of the Ghoul, Chill Touch of the Shadow, Raking Claws of the White, Life Leech of the Wraith, Rot of the Mummy, and Spirit Harvest of the Spectre. The Legion of Vengeful Banshees is a group of holy warriors fanatically devoted to Kieran Saley who specifically seek out the servants of Orcus. Appearance and Dress Kieran Saley's clergy wear loose black robes stitched with bone and ivory. They shave their heads and wear gray skull caps. Much like their goddess, they wear silver rings on all their fingers. Often, they will smear the ashes from cremated corpses upon their exposed skin during the performance of rituals. 
Clergy are not permitted to wear any armor even when adventuring. They are to rely on their undead thralls and spellcasting prowess for defense. Many times they will wear enchanted silver rings to provide them with better defensive capabilities. They favor thin daggers and other weapons that will inflict little physical damage on potential corpses they may choose to reanimate at a later time. General Rituals It is known that all worshippers will inevitably be turned into an undead being. However, if the individual is truly favored by Kirinsali, they will be turned into a Kirenshi. A Kirenshi is a banshee who are still capable of their spellcasting abilities once they turn. Rather than prepare their spells in the morning, worshippers and clergy prepare their spells in the dead of night. Each priestess or priest of Kirinsali lays in their own sarcophagus. When they rest, they hold on to their personal religious symbol to Kirinsali. It is said that if clergy is disturbed into slumber, Kirinsali will grant them the powers of a vampire for 24 hours to seek out who may have disturbed them in their slumber. Specific Named Rituals The Grave Rending is the one religious holiday celebrated by the faith of Kirinsali. It is celebrated on Midwinter's Eve. Each member of the faith capable of animating undead creatures is to animate as many as possible in veneration on this day. The thralls animated on this day are known as vengeance hunters and seek revenge on those who killed them for the next 24 hours. After these 24 hours, despite their success in their task, the hunters return to their individual graves. General Locations of Temples and Shrines Shrines to Kirinsali are simple and may only consist of a singular sarcophagus carved out of black marble. Upon the sarcophagus can be found artwork of undead rising up to take vengeance against the living. Small chapels to Kirinsali are found in the wild of the Underdark and small natural caves. Within can be found the bones of the dead that have been absorbed into the stone walls after years of passage. It is said that Kirin Sali will guide her worshippers to these hidden chapels. Specific Locations of Temples and Shrines The Acropolis of Thanatos Once a drow city under the thumb of Walf, the ruins of Veld Drinchar were inhabited by Kirinsali worshippers located in the middle of the subterranean Moon Deep Sea. The former Loth worshippers who lived here perished due to a plague, and the worshippers of Kirinsali decided to use this dead city as a center of power for their faith. The inhabitants took the skulls of the plague dead and created a horrific spectacle in the cavern ceiling above the city. These mounted skulls look down upon the city and create a clattering choir of skeletal teeth. Here was built the most prominent temple of Kirinsali worship, the Acropolis of Thanatos. Made out of black marble, this temple sat atop a huge stalagmite, which had a flattened top. The faithful arranged attacks on Vasa above them, where Orca's worship has waxed and waned in the past. Eventually, in an unlikely alliance, Lolf and Illustrae adherents took down the leading necromancers of Veldrinshar. Character Options For those playing 2nd edition, in the Demi-Human Deity Supplement, you can find the breakdown for Yathrin Shi, the specialty priest build for Karen Sali worshippers. For those playing 3rd edition, in the Player's Guide to Faerun, you can find the Yathrin Shi Prestige class. As with every deity-specific podcast, I have created a worshipper background. Thus, I believe a worshipper of Karen Sali would have the following features. 
two skill proficiencies, one in Arcana, the other in Intimidation. Two language proficiencies, one in Undercommon, the other in Abyssal. For the Ribbon ability, I would recommend the Hermit's Discovery feature from the Player's Handbook, or the Faction Agent's Safe Haven feature from the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. As per usual, the equipment guide from the different backgrounds I suggest would be the Acolyte's equipment. The following subclasses I think would be great for PCs or NPCs who are in service to Kieran Saley. Utilizing the path of the Ancestral Guardian, you could create a Barbarian surrounded by Vengeful Spirits. Clerics could use either the Arcano Domain from Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, or the Death Domain from the Dungeon Master's Guide. A paladin who takes an Oath of Vengeance from the Player's Handbook is a flavorful choice for a holy warrior of Kirin Sali. Finally, though it is obvious to most, the wizard who would specialize in the School of Necromancy as detailed in the Player's Handbook. Dungeon Master Options A Dungeon Master looking for monsters devoted to Kirin Sali can find some inspiration in the 3rd edition adventure the City of the Spider Queen, where you can find the stat blocks for a handful of undead creatures specific to Kieran Saley. Of particular interest might be the Abyssal Ghoul, the Queth Maren, the Wraith Spider, and the Keening Spirit Template for Monsters. In Dragon Issue 322, there is an article about the Nether Hounds. They are created and raised by hags in service to Kieran Saley, specifically to hunt down targets for revenge. They are fiendish undead who are drooling, ambling beasts. From 5th edition sources, the Dungeon Master has access to the wide array of undead creatures listed throughout the Monster Manual and Mordenkayan's Tome of Foes. Our particular interest to Kieran Saley, though, is the Banshee and the Revenant. Dungeon Masters can make use of a couple stat blocks to build NPCs related to the worship of Kieran Saley. From the Monster Manual, you can make use of the Archmage and Mage stat blocks. I would suggest swapping out some of their spells for specific necromancy spells to lean more into the worship of Kieran Saley. From Volo's Guide to Monsters, there is the Necromancer as well as the Apprentice Wizard stat blocks. The last option for Dungeon Masters to consider would be magic items. Kieran Saley's favorite weapon is the dagger. As mentioned before, she carries her own magical dagger called Cold Heart. Though I was unable to find any source that might be beneficial in 5th edition for said weapon. Once more, I suggest the 3rd edition adventure City of the Spider Queen as it brings to bear three different magical items that I think would be great that might be able to be converted to 5th edition. Uh, the first is the Claw of the Revenancer, second are Death Spears, and third is the Hand in Kieran Saley, which is not really her hand, but is a mummified drow hand that has five magical silver rings upon it. From 5th edition sources, I suggest the following magic items that Kieran Saley worshippers would likely make use of. From the Dungeon Master's Guide, I suggest the Amulet of Proof Against Detection and Location, Bracers of Defense, Cloak of Protection, Dagger of Venom, Headband of Intellect, and a variety of different Ion Stones, Pipes of Haunting, Ring of Evasion, many of the different rings, the Staff of Withering, the Wand of Binding, the Wand of Fear, and finally, the Wand of Paralysis. All right, and thank you once again for listening to Religion in the Realms. If you're interested in keeping up with the release of future episodes, you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and follow the podcast Twitter account at Realms Religion. If you wish to get in touch with me, my personal Twitter is at Shiv's Embrace. That is spelt S H I V S E M B R A C E. Next episode, we will continue our look at deities in the Drow Pantheon with an episode on Selvatarm, 
Loth's champion who looks over drow warriors and guides them in battle. Until next time, may Timora look kindly upon your dice rolls, Helm protect you, and Lathander light your path. Music for this episode, Shadowlands 3, Machine, by Kevin McLeod, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0.